Welcome to the Creative Cast. I'm your host, Tammy Munson, podcast producer, coach, and CEO of Wildfire Creative. Are you struggling to grow and monetize your podcasts? Want to learn more about starting your own podcast? Are you looking for the secrets behind the business side of podcasting? Well, friends, you are in the right place. Here on the Creative Cast, I'm going to be sharing all the tips and tricks on all things podcasting for the faith-based podcaster. Each episode is going to contain powerful information to help you get started with your own podcast, learn the secrets of building a business, and of course, growing and monetizing your podcast. All right, y'all, without further ado, let's get started. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Creative Cast. I'm your host, Tammy Munson. And I am so glad that you are here with me again this week. But before I started recording, I realized that it's almost September. Like, isn't that crazy? Like, where did the month go? Seriously. So good luck to all the kids and teachers on the brand new school year. And I just love this time of year. It To me, it feels like a new year. There's change that's in the air and all kind of newness surrounding it. And I just absolutely love it. The team here at Wildfire, we're starting to create and strategize our marketing plan for 2023, as well as some new projects. I am super, super excited about all that. Been having lots of conversations with many ladies who are thinking about launching their podcast next year. So it's really, really very exciting. When I'm having these conversations, the thing that really kind of gets to me is that I get many requests to work with ladies to launch their podcasts using our signature VIP program. And I just don't have enough hours in the day. I, I wish that I could work with everybody. I wish I could just clone myself sometimes. Don't you just want to clone yourself sometimes, especially as a mom? But anyway, but it's because I wanted to help as many ladies as possible that we kind of went back to the drawing board and figured, how can we do this? Well, we went ahead and created a very special program that is going to help you launch your podcast along with my help. Now, we've never done anything like this before, so I'm really, really very excited about it because I want to help you fast-track your new podcast and getting it launched by doing all the right things in the shortest amount of time. So the Quick Launch Podcast Intensive is all about helping you, the do-it-yourselfer, to launch your podcast with confidence. So together, you and I and several other ladies will work together through each stage of my signature launch process. Now, with this intensive, you're going to get everything you need to launch your podcast, how to get added to Apple, Spotify, and about 15 other podcast directories, as well as how to edit your podcast in either GarageBand or Audacity and much, much more. Now, I've never taught editing before, so this is really, really very special. It's a completely online program with tech tutorials, templates, checklists, and a live weekly group coaching with yours truly. I'm so, so very excited. So I've never offered anything like this before, but I'm only accepting five lucky ladies into the intensive. So go over to wildfirecreativecompany.com forward slash quick launch. I'll make sure to drop that in the show notes for you as well. So let's get into today's topic. We're talking about podcast monetization. Now, I'm just going to say it. The current state of the economy sucks. There's no other way to put it. (laughs) And I think we can all agree on that, right? No matter where you stand politically, because this is not a show about politics, it kind of sucks. Everything is super expensive. And lately, I've been receiving so many emails and DMs about how can I add more revenue? How can I monetize my podcast? Because y'all, even some of my long-term clients have had to pause 
their editing and production services with us because they just can't afford it. And it's one of the things, unfortunately, that gets put on pause most of the time. And I get it. I totally get it. It's hitting everyone super hard because when gas prices are more expensive than a gallon of milk. So the question really is, what can you do? Well, of course, you can try and reduce your expenses as much as you possibly can. But sometimes that just isn't possible. And what if you just can't reduce anything anymore? Well, then it's time to start thinking about how can we add more revenue to the mix? Because like my friend and business coach, Allie Worthington says, you can always make more money through side hustles, courses, whatever. However, let me just say this first. Now, a couple weeks ago on episode 43, and if you haven't listened, I really encourage you to go back and listen to that episode. As a podcaster, you cannot expect to start making lots of revenue from your podcasts unless you're maybe Joe Rogan or Gary Vaynerchuk or a celebrity or a big brand. But for the rest of us, you need to ensure that you have built your audience and community with some of the tips I mentioned in episode 43. So here's a quick review. You want to have great content, great audio. You want to be releasing your podcast episodes consistently. When whatever frequency you're doing that, make sure that you are consistent in that effort. Weekly needs to go out weekly. The first and third Thursday needs to go out the first and third Thursday. You need to be telling everybody about your podcast, sharing it on social media, sending it out to your email list, telling everybody that you know about it. So that's a number of ways that you can build your audience, build that community. So once you have that, let's talk about some of the typical avenues of monetization. Now, first is the most traditional way, getting sponsors for your podcast and utilizing what we call baked in ads, ads that we're going to embed into the audio file. Now, this is one of the most common ways to monetize a podcast. And it's usually the easiest as in, depending on the niche that you have, you could probably find a sponsor for your podcast. Now, that's going to depend on downloads, listens, your audience, numbers, things like that. But most of the time, sponsorship just involves contacting relevant sponsors or brands within your niche to advertise their product and or service. Now, you might have heard other podcast hosts use a pre-roll ad they start out the podcast with that or end their show with what we call a post-roll ad with something like this episode has been brought to you by Rode Microphone. (laughs) Y'all know I love a good Rode Microphone. Sometimes it's even said during the middle of the episode. Now, of course, landing a sponsorship is easier if your podcast has an established audience, consistent episode publishing, and the metrics to back that up, download, audience numbers, things like that. I know I've talked before about focusing just on downloads because I believe it's a vanity metric and you shouldn't just focus on the downloads. There's lots of other things at play when we're looking at those numbers. In reality, most brands that are looking at sponsorships are wanting to know what those downloads numbers are. And you're going to want those numbers to be at least two to 3,000 per month with an audience of roughly 1,000 people. Now, that could change depending on the sponsorship, what your podcast topics are. Now, if you aren't sure what your audience numbers are, you're going to want to use something called PodTrack. And we use that a lot for analytics Now, of course, your podcast host is going to give you analytics, but most of the podcast hosts do not give you numbers on what your audience numbers are. PodTrack will do that. You can set up a free account. I'll drop the link in the show notes for you. The other thing that you can do is dynamic ads with Buzzsprout. Now, Buzzsprout is my favorite for dynamic ads. Other hosts have them. There's usually some sort of quantifying number that you need to have with them. I know Libsyn does that. But dynamic ads are ads that you can insert into previously done shows. So let's say, for example, you did a podcast in November of 2020, and you want to add a new ad into that. Now, 
with baked in ads, you take the audio file, you grab the the new ad, you drop it in there, and then you republish the file. With dynamic ads, it's a piece of software that works with Buzzsprout's hosting services. And you can interchange those ads as need be. So that's why sometimes if you're listening to older episodes, but it has ads that are more relatable now in the moment, that's kind of what's happening. I'm going to be doing a much deeper dive on the dynamic ads in a few weeks. So stay tuned for that. The other thing is affiliate marketing. Now, affiliate marketing is not new. It has been around for ages and ages and ages. And people utilize it a lot. Mostly blogs have utilized it. Well, now podcasters are starting to use affiliate marketing, creating partnerships with different companies. So affiliate marketing is basically you are selling another product or service under a special link or coupon code. So, And then when podcasters click on that link or go to that link and buy that product or service, the host of the podcast is going to receive a commission from that sale. Now, many companies have affiliate programs. Libsyn has one. Buzzsprout has one. Lots and lots of companies are utilizing affiliate programs. One of my favorites is Amazon. We use that here with Wildfire. How much money you earn from these affiliate marketing activities typically depends on the size of your audience. So this goes without saying, but I feel like I need to say it, is that you only should promote a product or service that you truly believe in and that you use yourself and that it's going to apply to your audience. So that way you're building that no like trust factor that we are always talking about. Now, the other thing, and this is one of the things that is really becoming very, very popular, is offering premium content. Now, this is really a great way to take your podcast business to the next level. It does involve a fee, a subscription fee for special or exclusive content that's unavailable on your regular free podcast feed. So for example, let's say you release two weekly episodes where one is free and the other is paid. Now that paid content, however, it has to be unique. It's not something that they can get anywhere else. It's just for that paid subscription. So like my friends over at Storytellers, they do a more long form Q&A type episode with their featured storyteller. And they do something called the story behind the story. So they're asking other questions of that guest, of that storyteller. And it airs as a different show. They also do Bible studies, all kinds of different types of of content. The other thing you could do is a live recorded show that is only available under that premium content. You could do a video version of your show like Daily Wire Plus does. You get their videos from those interviews for only $10 a month. And then one of the new things that's really popping up and I really, really like it is the ad-free show. And yes, it is completely ad-free. and. As a listener, I love this idea. As a producer, I get the needs for ads and creating revenue for your podcast and because of all the expenses that come along with it. But like I said, as a listener, I would much rather pay not to have to listen to ads. I may get notes about that, but that's just the way that I, that it is. Now, if you're interested in doing something like this, one of the sites that I love the most is Patreon. And it's really become a popular donation site among content creators. And quite honestly, it's my preferred recommendation. And no, there's no affiliate (laughs) thing for this with Patreon. It's just, I really, really like it. It's generally the method that works the best. Now remember, the paid and the free content must be value added for your audience. Because you want them to stick around for that. So if you're interested in doing this and to start providing premium content, I would consider signing up for membership platforms that can help distribute the premium episodes. And again, Patreon is my absolute favorite. And I will drop that link in the show notes for you as well. So if you're one of those people that they say, oh, I don't want to be salesy or oh, I don't want to do this. You could also consider donations and membership communities. So 
like I said, if you're not really big on that, you can always ask your audience for donations to help support your podcast. And you can use services like Buy Me a Cup of Coffee, DonorBox, or even PayPal and or Stripe. You'd be really surprised at how many of your audience listeners are going to be willing to donate a few extra bucks to support your podcast, their favorite podcast. And it's really a great way for new podcast creators to start earning since they're not going to have the downloads. And it may be just like, this show is listener supported. I would appreciate if you could help out this podcast if you like it, but you get my point. Like I said, so you can use lots of different services to collect those donations. Buy me a cup of coffee, donor box, PayPal, Stripe, even GoFundMe you can use. And once you have an account with one of them, you add the link, you mention it on the show, and you just simply ask your listeners to chip in what they can if they feel so inclined. But make sure that you're keeping your reasons authentic. And even if you are one of those who is not super excited about asking for donations, mention what you're using it for. Maybe you need to buy a better mic. Or are the donations going to help create more episodes or more quality content on your show? Be transparent and authentic with your audience. Because I guarantee the more you do, the more they would be willing to donate since they know exactly where that money is going. Now, another option is joining a podcast advertising network. Now, these are basically third-party platforms that act as kind of the go-between between between hosts and sponsors. So there's many of them. There's AdvertiseCast, Midroll, PodGrid, PodCorn. But then there's also some great niche-related podcast networks like the Christian Parenting Network. The That Sounds Fun podcast network by Annie F. Downs. Jamie Ivey has a brand new one called Ivy Media. And there's so many more. Even one of my own clients, The Wonder Podcast with Chrissy Dunham and Lisa Clark, added a second podcast to their offerings and signed up with the Christian Podcast Network. And they're having a wonderful experience working with them. With any podcast network, the one thing is that they're going to take a cut of your earnings. They need to get paid too, right? So make sure that if you're starting to talk with advertising networks, you want to read that fine print, see how much they're taking, and making sure that it's going to be a good fit for not only them, but for you as well. Because depending on the size of your audience, you can make anywhere from a couple of bucks to several thousand dollars by joining an ad network. Now, one of my last tips is selling merch. So if you have a loyal audience that absolutely loves your show, you're getting consistent downloads each and every week, then it may be time to consider selling your own products. I mean, who doesn't love some good merch? Because, y'all, I am a sucker for some good merch. And if you've ever watched any of my Instagram videos, you know that I am willing to wear any kind of merch on those. Some of my favorite podcasters. This type of thing can be it's going to require a little more effort on your part. And it could be anything from t-shirts to hoodies to stickers to coffee mugs, depends to whatever you want. You want to stay in line with your podcast branding, create products with your podcast name, a logo, maybe even a catchphrase that you use all the time. The best way to sell merch is really through your own website because you're already sending them there with their targeted traffic for show notes to listen to the episode, to sign up for the email list, all those other activities that you're already doing. So they're already going to be there and customers can order right from there. Now, if you didn't want to do that, if you didn't have a dedicated website for whatever reason, you can also use a third-party platform like Printful. I've used them in the past, absolutely love them. And they take care of all the printing, the selling, they set you up with a page, they take care of all the shipping, everything is done for you. They just take a cut. Now, the thing about selling merch is this. It's not only a great way to connect with your audience, it's also a great way to expand your show's reach. Maybe you're attending a conference and you've got a t-shirt with your podcast name on it and people see it and they start asking you questions about it, etc. Or think about it this way. You start having your listeners buy the merch and then your podcast community literally becomes a walking billboard for your podcast. How cool is that, right? 
Now, no matter which way you decide to go, as you can see, there's lots of different ways to make money from podcasting. And I'm sure that you have some fabulous ideas of your own. My suggestion is this. Try combining a few different methods rather than putting all your eggs in one basket because that generally doesn't work out very well. I've heard stories from, from clients that have decided to, to go all in with one and they spend tons of money and it doesn't go very well. And I would hate to see that happen for you when you're trying to make a few extra bucks because you could always change and adjust your efforts and methods over time by utilizing different methods. And there is no one right way to monetize your podcast. There is just the right way for you. Now, I wouldn't be a very good coach if I didn't say this. Every podcaster needs a way to support their show. I get it. Times are tough. Podcasts can be expensive. They're not free. (laughs) I wish they were. But the most successful ones have found ways to do that, but still respect your listener. Because monetization is nice, but you've got to put your listeners first. Because it's your audience is what makes your show viable. It's not you. As much as we would like to think it is, it's not even about your guests. It's about the listener and what they gain from investing their valuable time with you and your content. Now, I wanted to mention two of the most the two most common podcast monetization questions that I get. Number 1, should I start a podcast to make money? I'm sure you guys already know what I'm going to say. No. <laughs> There's really nothing else to say about that. No, you should not start a podcast to make money. Absolutely not. You could have thousands of other reasons to start a podcast, but doing it for the money is not one of them. Number two is how many downloads do I need to start monetizing my podcast? Now, you know, podcasting is kind of like the wild, wild west sometimes. There's just no hard rule here. But generally, I find if you're getting from 400 to 600 downloads per episode, That's a great time to start thinking about monetizing your podcast. But this is a guideline. It's not, like I said, it's not a hard and fast rule, y'all. Now, if you're considering joining a podcast advertising network, they're going to have very specific minimum download requirements before you can apply. Same thing goes for sponsorships. They may say, well, we need you to have a thousand downloads per 30 days. It just depends on. So figure out what's going to work best for you, your audience, and your goals for monetization, and then kind of go from there. And let me know. Let me know if anything of these work for you. You can shoot me an email anytime at Tammy at wildfirecreativecompany.com. This week, I have a music resource recommendation for you. If you're looking for music for your podcast that you're launching, or you just want to change up the music for your podcast, which I highly recommend, change it up a little bit. Don't be afraid of that. One of the ones I want you to check out is Audio Jungle. I absolutely love these guys because we need to use royalty-free music, and royalty-free music is not free, generally speaking, but it is a must. So the team over at Audio Jungle, they are awesome to work with. Their library is amazing. I've never left their site not being able to find something that I'm looking for for a client podcast or an audio project that we're working on or or something to that effect. They're relatively inexpensive and it doesn't cost you your firstborn to purchase music for your podcast because I have seen some places that they wanted $55 for some music. It was beautiful music and it would have worked for our project, but that just wasn't in the budget for that particular client. But I highly recommend these guys. This is not an ad. This is not an affiliate thing. Is This is just love, just pure love. And I love them so, so much. So that's pretty much it for this week. Now, next week's episode, I'm tackling the top seven rookie mistakes that most new podcasters make. And I want you to avoid these mistakes. So if you're a new podcaster or you are in 
launch mode, building mode, you definitely want to listen. Even if you're a advanced podcaster, you've been doing this a while, you may want to tune in and listen to it. Maybe you'll learn something new. Now, ladies, I appreciate you spending this time with me. I really, really do. I believe in each and every one of you. I believe that you can't let the overwhelm and some of the intimidating tech or the anxiety with your microphone prevent you from accomplishing your goals, whatever they may be. So let's continue to walk through this journey together so you can spend less time worrying about all the details and more time creating your content, spreading your message, and sharing your God-given talents with the world. I hope this episode was helpful for you today. I hope that you have a great day, and I will talk to you next Monday. Bye, y'all.